Imposter syndrome feels like it's reached epidemic proportions. Maybe it's just that the term has gained popularity, but people seem to find camaraderie in proclaiming that they suffer from it. Me? I'm over it. <laughs> Enough already. Is everyone so insecure that they constantly question their ability to perform? Or is it that we all have such a desperate need to be liked, even if it's for commiserating with others who feel as inadequate as we are? Enough with this false pride. I want people to understand how even speaking the words imposter syndrome about yourself subconsciously wears you down. I'll give you some tools to stop the negative self-talk and help you step into your power. Hi, I'm Jenny Clark, a conscious leadership expert who spent two decades in executive recruiting and talent management. Having worked with giants like Google, Spencer Stewart, I discovered that the secret to transformative leadership lies in the five dimensions of conscious leadership. And I'm here to help you unlock your full potential. Join me on this channel as we embark on an honest and vulnerable journey together to become the kind of leader that genuinely inspires organizational transformation. So here's the thing. I somehow chose industries and companies, banking, commercial real estate, executive recruiting. These organizations were and mostly are dominated by men, mostly white men, albeit to lesser degrees. That meant that I was often one of the few or the only and not always expected to be there, if at all, right? In the early years of my career, I questioned myself and I wondered if I had what it took to be successful. And at times, I'll admit, I played small and I discounted my gifts. In school, I discounted my intelligence and my intellect. In my AP classes, I didn't push for A's. Similarly, in professional settings, I sometimes discounted my expertise and my professional competencies. I went on to become fairly accomplished and I learned how to embrace my gifts and how to keep developing new ones. I realized my superpowers of seeing people, almost like x-ray vision. It was a very useful tool as an executive recruiter, and I began to see how well I pattern matched and was able to identify and develop strategies and systems. I'm a systems thinker. I believe that emerged from my study of languages and some of my competencies and attributes that might have been innate gifts, but I had to find them through experiences and filtering out others' observations and comments and I had to accept these gifts for myself. Here are three things to consider if you want to overcome imposter syndrome. Take the compliment. Humility is important, but so is acknowledging when you are good at what you do. Own it. Don't be like, oh no, that really was nothing. No, it was something, own it. Now, don't let it go to your head and think that you're invincible, but listen for the critique from those you trust and be open to always accepting the compliment. You know, one of the things that this brings up for me too is the fact that you can't take the compliment makes me wonder if you can accept when someone is showing you love and affection. And I don't just mean in a romantic sense, but how much do you love yourself such that you can say, yes, I love myself. I am worthy. I am lovable. I am good at what I do. And this is one of the five dimensions. This hits on two of the five. The first one being know yourself. The second one being speak your truth. And the third one, inspire love, starting with self-love. So I think if you really start questioning, do you love yourself? If the answer is yes, then yeah, accept that compliment. Accept what it feels like to feel good about who you are and how good you are at what you do. I want you to be able to acknowledge that you are worthy of love. You can accept the compliment and you don't need to say things that you don't mean. You don't need to please others. Don't believe in the meritocracy. Everyone who is more senior, more highly paid, better educated is not necessarily smarter, more effective, a bigger producer, or a great leader. Let's face it, relationships, pedigree, and other things totally uncorrelated to one's success in the role often determine who gets in and who gets promoted. I've read that there's a 10% overlap between confidence and competence. 
The most outspoken and confident person is often the least competent, but we give them the benefit of the doubt because they meet our beliefs and our unconscious expectations of what good looks like. I think for me, the most pivotal moment when I realized all of this was when I joined Spencer Stewart, one of the top five search firms in the world. And I was in my 30s, and I had been a vice president at Prudential, but I went in kind of eyes wide open thinking, wow, you know, these guys are, they've got bigger books of business. They're really impressive. I'm going to be interviewing all of these very senior people who, you know, I'm, I might be a little bit intimidated. And in my first couple of months of doing these interviews, I'm conducting the assessment of these senior leaders. I kind of walked away going, that's it? I mean, I was really not terribly impressed with what I saw. And these were very senior, highly compensated, mostly men. So I think we, we all need that moment where we realize that this is a game and it was not necessarily designed for some of us who come from um, different backgrounds, right? So once you understand that, you can begin to play the game and you make sure you are showing up buttoned up that you are always demonstrating with confidence just how good you are. And enough with this imposter syndrome. Let that be for the, the people who really aren't good at what they do, but have been faking it, because there are plenty of those out there. There are real imposters, but I think it's fewer than half of the people who walk around talking about it are really suffering from it. I think you're better than you think you are. And I alluded to this before, but I want to reiterate it, that I want you to seek professional help if self-sabotage and self-doubt is overwhelming you. It's often associated with depression and anxiety that can come from deeper issues. We are in a mental health crisis and can't make light of a serious emotional or mental condition. There's no amount of factual rationalization that's going to change someone's mind in these kinds of instances. So investigate the healthcare benefits that your company offers to identify a professional and start treatment. Yeah, in terms of practices that you might start for yourself, even before you seek professional help, um, I'm a big believer in meditation. Um, it can help just ground you, find your breath, stop the, the monkey brain as they call it, stop that monkey mind of just always going and questioning and doubting learn to just shut it out. And I've also found affirmations can be a great tool where you write down simple statements that you repeat to yourself, put a daily reminder or every three hours, every three hours reminder, I am enough, I am strong, I am outstanding at what I do. Whatever it takes for you to begin to believe and know what you're made of, that's gonna fortify you over time. I know firsthand how taking that first step can be the catalyst for a life-changing transformation. I remember the moment I decided to harness my own strengths and it made all the difference in my career. That's why I've created a career mapping tool just for you to help you uncover your unique competencies and leverage them to design your own career map. Take the first step towards your next level by clicking the link in the video description. And let's start this incredible journey together.